One of the cheapest USB to HDMI video capture cards so that you can bring in a signal from your DSLR to your computer to be seen as a webcam, whether it's Zoom, Skype, QuickTime, any other program. Let's go ahead and check it out. Hey everyone, my name is Zephan Moses Blacksburg and welcome back to another video on this time video capture devices. Now these little devices have become super popular and so if you're wanting to learn a little bit more about live streaming, about bringing in professional quality video to your computer as seen like a webcam, then make sure to hit that subscribe button below and like this video to let us know that you wanna see more content just like this. Now this HDMI video capture device, it's, it's super tiny, you can see it there. This came from Amazon and the company that made it is Mavis Link. I actually buy other products from them because they make really great HDMI fiber cables for longer cable runs than 25 feet. I actually have 75 and 100 foot long HDMI fiber cables from them. So I really do like that manufacturer, but you're gonna find these pretty much from hundreds of different companies at this point in time because these things exploded on the scene. Ever since COVID-19 started, everybody wanted to get their hands on a video capture device because they were using Zoom more often. They wanted to make sure that they looked better. They had to make up for the fact that they couldn't go into a studio or to their office where maybe they had a better camera, but a lot of people had DSLRs available and just needed something to get that signal into the computer. So let's start off with what is a capture device? What is it actually? Actually do. The way that I describe it is think about how a water main is probably this gigantic pipe filled with water that is connecting neighborhoods upon neighborhoods. And when it hits your neighborhood, we can't just have this gigantic pipe with, you know, 100 times fire hose pressure going into your house. Otherwise, your house would explode, your toilet would refill within. 0.2 seconds, uh, it just, it would not work out well. So you need something to bring that water pressure down, right? Well, the same thing applies with a camera. There's so much data that's passing through the camera to the SD card when we're recording in camera. And with a USB webcam that we're typically used to using, there's not nearly as much data passing through it. It's not as high quality of a signal. So we need a device that tricks the computer into seeing this camera as if it's a webcam. That's exactly what a video capture device does. It is it will help us take the HDMI signal out of the camera and basically convince the computer that whatever is coming in over the USB signal is what you should see as a webcam. So I wanted to show you this one in particular because I've tested it, I've seen it work so many times. This particular one can take in a 4K signal, but it will only output a 1080p signal into the computer. So just keep that in mind if you decide to buy this one, if you're trying to get 4K in, uh, there's some higher end ones that I recommend for actually importing 4K. You can look at the Elgato cam link. But this one in particular comes with really nothing. And so we need to make sure we have the right adapters. For this MacBook Pro, it has USB-C plugs. So today I have a USB-C to a regular USB 3.0 adapter. I'm gonna plug that in here. And then I'm gonna take our capture card. That's gonna get plugged right into my adapter. And then with this particular camera, this is the Canon EOS R. This has a mini HDMI. This is a big mistake a lot of people make is not all cameras have a full size HDMI cable. So you need to make sure that you're getting the right one. This one in particular being a mini HDMI, the easiest way to check is to go ahead and open up that port and take a look at it and compare it in size to the full size HDMI input on the capture device. And if it's smaller, then it's pretty obvious it's a mini HDMI. So this cable, it's pretty short, uh, maybe two or three feet, but this is a mini HDMI to full size HDMI. So I'm gonna take this into our camera and then output this to our capture card. And that's it, right? Well, let's go ahead and turn on the camera. Let's check, make sure things look okay. The first place I'm gonna go is QuickTime. And this is usually my quick test for a lot of things live streaming is if you open up QuickTime and you go to file at the top 
and select new movie recording, you can actually choose a webcam plugged in, whether it's the internal uh, webcam on the computer, or in this case, it's already selected it by default. The little drop down arrow next to the recording button allows us to select USB capture. And then if we wanted to, we could even select USB digital audio for the audio that was coming through the camera as well. So as you can see here, wave hi to our assistant in the back there. You can see some of our setup. And this camera is coming into the computer. Everything that happens here is happening right on the computer screen. So I'll show you guys this way here. It's going to be a little inception, but it's almost real time. There's the tiniest bit of latency, but it's really not that bad. And to have something like this in your back pocket for, say, $20 for such a little tool and then you know a few adapters to make sure that everything works okay I like having this as a backup for some of my live streams if I ever had to get a signal into a computer because one of my devices wasn't working but I also love this for webcams you know if I wanted to be able to use my DSLR as a webcam because I was presenting at an event uh, this is one of the best ways to do that so I highly recommend it uh, this device, again, is made by Mavis Link. I'll go ahead and put a link to that device on Amazon uh, in the description below. But just know that there are so many other manufacturers that are creating these uh, anywhere from the $10 price point to about $25.30. I have seen some of the more professional video companies like ICANN come out with their own version. I think Atomos might have one as well, but they're upcharging. They're charging like $80 to $100 for the same exact thing that's functioning the same exact way. So I don't necessarily recommend having to go with the higher end ones. I think that if you're just trying to get this in as a webcam, if you're just trying to get a better camera quality on your computer, then this is a fantastic option. At the same time, your mileage may vary. Uh, you know, these are really cheap devices coming from China. Uh, we don't know what the quality is going to be like from company to company. So I can't make a promise that it's going to work 100% of the time. But I do think this is a fantastic little device to be keeping in your back pocket. And it's going to really take your Zooms, your Skypes, your uh, video quality to a whole new level. Now, before we go, I want to show you a quick demo of just bringing this up in Skype to verify that it works OK, just like we did with QuickTime, and also bringing this up in Zoom to make sure that it's seeing the camera as well. So let's go ahead and plug this back in. I'm just going to plug our capture device in, our HDMI cable in. I'm going to turn our camera on. And let's hop over to, say, let's start with Zoom. So my Zoom is open and logged in. I'm going to go to the very top because we're on a Mac to open up our preferences for Zoom. And then we're going to click over to the Video tab. And look at that. Automatically, it's coming up. So hey, you can see right there, real time, this camera is coming in as USB camera. Just make sure that you're not set to the FaceTime camera and accidentally seeing yourself and thinking that everything's good to go. Uh, just switch over to that USB camera there. And then audio wise, everyone's setup is going to be different. Some people might be plugging in external microphones. If I were trying to bring in the audio that was going into the camera here, then I could go to the microphones tab and I could select USB digital audio. And then the audio that's coming into the camera here will come in directly to the computer. Not always the case for some people who've got the fancier podcasting microphones, but if you're running you know, directly into your camera, then this is a great option as well. Keep in mind two big things. One, this camera, uh, the Canon EOS R, has a recording time limit of 29 minutes and 59 seconds. So you cannot record in camera and on the computer at the same time. Otherwise, you have to stop and start and stop and start every 29 minutes and 59 seconds. The second thing is clean HDMI output. This comes up a lot because people ask, why are my settings showing up on screen? Why is the autofocus box showing up on screen? You have to make sure that you're using a camera that has clean HDMI output, meaning those menus, those displays, that information that you typically see on the screen of the camera should not be showing up on the output over the HDMI cable. The best way to check that, honestly, is to just Google your camera's uh, make and model with the words clean 
HDMI, and you'll see pretty darn quick in the Google results if your camera has a clean HDMI output. With that said, I know that the EOS R is a perfect option for this and does have a clean HDMI output. I've also heard great things about the Canon M50s being used. Uh, they're a fantastic camera for around $500, and so to have a DSLR be able to stream this way is a great option. Now, we checked in Zoom really quick. I'm just gonna open up Skype to see how Skype sees this camera. So we've got Skype right here, opens up, logs in. We're gonna go to Skype preferences in the top left corner. And then we can go to our audio and video settings. And again, by default, it is showing up that it's already got the USB camera selected. So you can see there and verify it. Um, but you know, if it did happen to be on the FaceTime camera, you would simply just select this option right up here in the corner and hop over to the USB camera. Same thing goes for audio. Microphone down here below right now, it's using my built-in MacBook Pro microphone. I would have to change it over to USB digital audio to be using the audio coming out of the camera. So as you can see here, this is super simple, plug and play. This is not the solution that I recommend for ultimately recording you know, longer form content, courses, things of that nature. There's a lot of other solutions that I recommend, but if you wanna get your DSLR signal into the computer in full HD and be able to send a fantastic looking signal out, this is your best option in my opinion for you know, $20 to be able to get this one little piece to do everything. So if you like this video, again, make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up if you wanna learn more about devices just like this or some live streaming tips and advice. And we'll see you again in the next video.